Hi, I'm Elizabeth with Mama Can Do It, and today I want to teach you how to make some ruffled leggings. So this is my favorite pattern that I've made in a really long time. I just love how cute these leggings look on my baby. Speaking of baby, I have patterns from newborn to 36 months as one pattern, and then the other one I have as 3T to size 16. So you can have two different sizes for your children so everybody will fit. So the first thing that you're going to need is going to be a pattern. And here I'm going to be making the 12 to 18 months for my daughter Joy. And another thing that you're going to need is going to be your fabric. So I have fabric here from Simply Tea and I love it. So one of the um, important things when you're choosing a fabric is to make sure that it has at least 50% stretch. Um, it doesn't need to be a four-way stretch, but four-way stretch fabrics usually have the best recovery. Um, and so when you're choosing, it is best to have a four-way stretch. So this here is Wine Rayon Spandex from Simply Tea, and I love this color. And this is gonna be the main color of my leggings. Over here I have um, the Paisley Rayon Spandex, also from Simply Tea, and this is going to be for my ruffles on my leggings. So one last thing that you're going to need to get started is going to be elastic. Here I have one inch knitted elastic that I'm going to be using for the waist of these leggings. And it's important that you get knitted elastic and not braided elastic because what I've found is that braided elastic actually loses its stretch. So when you're attaching it to the leggings and you're going to be sewing it right to the leggings, you want to make sure that you use a knitted elastic. All right, let's get started. Okay, so for the first step, we're gonna cut out our fabric. So here I have the back pieces, and you can tell because it is higher here, um, but also it sticks out more at this point here. This is the um, back center seam right here, and this is the front center seam. So you can see I have two pieces that are cut and they mirror each other and so I find that the easiest way to do that is literally to fold my fabric, place my pattern piece on it, and then cut around it. Um, and so something that you want to consider before you start cutting as well is the fabric grain and the stretch. So this fabric is actually 50% stretch both this way and this way. This is the length and this is the width. So, and the reason, and how you know that is if you get really close onto the fabric, um, and my camera won't show it, or I would show you, you're actually going to see these lines. And those lines, that's actually the fabric grain. If it was a two-way stretch fabric, what you would see are the lines, and it would actually only stretch this way, the horizontal way. Um, so that's how you can tell the fabric grain. If you look at a couple different fabrics, you're going to notice right away, if, if you look really close, you can see the lines. It almost looks like tiny, tiny knits. Um, just like just like how if your grandma was to knit you a hat or some mittens. Like, you can see the lines in the knit. It's the same way with the knitted fabric. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to put them right sides together. And this actually, when I cut it, I cut it with the um, wrong sides together. So I'm going to just turn this around and I kind of wish I had cut it with the right sides together initially, that would have been easier. Um, so I am just going to turn this around and get it all lined up and then what we're going to do is we're going to sew the center back and the center front. Now this is the center back here and then this is the center front here. So I'm going to turn this one um, inside out as well and we're going to sew this 3 8 of an inch of a seam allowance all the way down here and every time that you sew with knits you want to make sure that you're sewing with a stitch that can stretch. So whether that is a zigzag stitch, whether it is an elastic stitch, um, a serger, anything that you know is going to be able to take some stretching and pulling, that is the kind of stitch that you want to use. In fact, if you were to look at your sewing machine manual, usually they will tell you what type of um, stitch to use for that. It'll also even recommend needles that are good for that type of um, project. So let's go ahead and do that. 
Okay, so I have gone ahead and sewed my back center seam and my front center seam. And I also put my pieces together back to back like this so that you could see um, the difference between the back piece and the front piece. So you can see here the back center seam is the highest and it goes down to the front center seam being the lowest. So what we're gonna do first is we're actually gonna open up the back piece just like this. And then we are going to take our back pattern piece, which I have sitting right here. I'll move the front one aside. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to draw, putting this right here in the center, we're going to draw this line right onto our um, right onto our pants. And how I've found that I like to do this is one of two ways. I can either draw a dot here, and I'm actually gonna use a Sharpie because it works the best on knits. Uh, if you have a better way, let me know for knits. I can draw a mark right here, and then I'm gonna actually do the same thing on this side where the center seam is. Um, and so then I can connect these two dots. Um, another thing that people have done is they've actually taken this and folded it and made a crease, and you can actually use that then as a marker. Um, I am not going to do that today. I'm just going to be doing it this way. So I'm gonna line it up again, just with the barely the edges showing, just like this. And then in the center, I'm going to mark, make sure I'm all lined up here. In the center, I'm gonna mark where these are. And then I'm actually going to do the same thing by flipping it over. And I can see through it that these are my lines here. Oops, wrong way. That was almost a bad thing. Okay, and so then what I'll do is I'm gonna connect these lines. So let me do that real quick. All right, now that I have my lines drawn on with the Sharpie, what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna look at the front pattern piece, which is here, and I'm going to find the rear ruffles on the pattern piece. And what it is, is it's actually telling me um, for my size, which is 12 to 18 months, I'm gonna start over at the size and go all the way over, that my rear ruffles need to be 1.5 by 25 inches. So I'm gonna go and grab my ruffle fabric and cut some strips and then I'll show you how I did it.